Now there's good news here, and the good news is Jesus doesn't give out crumbs. He is compassionate, merciful, and generous beyond our expectation. among us hasn't faced times of feeling overwhelmed and completely helpless. Perhaps it's a life crisis, spiritual struggle, maybe the consequences of our own poor choices or someone else's. It could be many things or it could be any one thing that brings on that feeling of despair, the feeling that we can't do this alone. None of these things matter to Jesus. What matters to him is that we come to him in faith. He would probably like us to come to him more often. Like the God, woman in our gospel reading today, we do go to him and we pray, Lord, please help me. Writer Anne Lamott, in her book on prayer, calls this the first great prayer. So we can all relate to this woman who comes to Jesus to find healing for her daughter. She's in a desperate situation. Her daughter's demon-possessed. And who knows what kind of life that must be for her and her mother. On the surface, her encounter with Jesus looks like another example of healing prayer, and it is, but it's more than that. It's an example of faith, a deep, unwavering, tenacious faith. Faith in Jesus. Faith that empowered her to overcome the circumstances or obstacles in her own life, things that she had no control over, to come to him. So who is she? And how did she meet Jesus? Well, Jesus has been in northern Galilee doing his ministry. The Pharisees have arrived to keep an eye on him. He's feeling the pressure of resistance to his ministry. So he withdraws from there and goes across the border to this Gentile region of Tyre and Sidon. Mark tells in his gospel that this was to be a sort of retreat for Jesus and his disciples, some time alone where he could teach them um, give them perhaps some deeper teaching on things he's already talked about. Time away from the crowds in Israel. And he has been talking to them about what defiles a person, telling them that it's not what goes into a person, it's what comes out, like words, behaviors, and attitudes that make a person unclean. So I wondered when he, this reading about the Canaanite woman comes following that, almost like it could be an illustration. Because certainly this Canaanite woman, with her cry for help, stands in sharp contrast to the law-abiding Pharisees. So even though he preferred time alone with his disciples, word got out. This woman came to him with her cry of desperation. And I think she shows remarkable courage. She was a Gentile and a Canaanite, neither of which had any standing in Israel. The Canaanites were despised by Israel and had been for generations for their pagan worship and their temple sacrifices. Their temple worship was an abomination to God and to Israel. 
In her eyes, this woman, in their eyes, this woman couldn't be more unclean. She was an outsider in every way. These are her circumstances, and she can't change any of it. But that doesn't stop her. She has her eyes on Jesus. And clearly, she is not going away. In fact, I think this woman long ago turned her back on her pagan gods. They were no use to her. They had been no help to her. She had no faith in them. She puts her faith in Jesus. And her faith in him is a powerful force. Powerful enough to push her forward through the crowd to talk to him. Close enough to fall at his feet. Now she lives on the border, so she's close enough to Israel to have heard about Jesus, obviously. And what comes out of her, this unclean woman, is a passionate cry for mercy. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. These are expressions that Israel would use to talk about Messiah. So she knows who Jesus is, or at least she knows who she believes who she thinks he is, and she appeals to him for mercy, and she believes he will show mercy. She believes he has the power to heal her daughter. But there's a pause here. Jesus doesn't reply. Not a word. Perhaps he's testing her faith. And when the disciples say, send her away, he looks to them and says, I was only sent to the lost sheep of Israel. This isn't what we expect Jesus to say. And I don't think he's being unkind. I think he's explaining that his mission is to the children of Israel. They are to receive the gospel, and according to God's plan, they are to be the light that takes it to the Gentiles. Jesus cannot and will not override God's plan. Salvation comes to Israel first. As it turned out, Israel rejected him. He was crucified, and it was after his resurrection that the disciples were sent with the message of salvation to the world. So it is a message for the Gentiles, but not yet. Nevertheless, Jesus graciously gives us a glimpse of future hope. He does not turn this Canaanite woman away. When he does turn to respond to her, he's touched not just by her faith, but by her whole attitude. First of all, she's completely humble. Matthew tells us she came, knelt before him. One translation says she worshiped Jesus. She knows how to approach the one she calls Lord. And she knew her place before Jesus. So when Jesus responds to her and refers to helping her as tossing the children's bread to the dogs, she doesn't flinch. This woman knows her own unworthiness. She's heard it all before. She knows she has no claim on Jesus. She knows she doesn't deserve anything from him. She knows Israel thinks they're all dogs, wild and unclean. But she's not distracted by that. She will not be pushed into taking offense or defending herself. 
She is completely focused on Jesus and she appeals to a sense of compassion. And she says to him, even a dog is allowed the crumbs off the floor. Now, her humility to me is certainly commendable. But what struck me even more was her profound willingness to accept the very least Jesus has to offer. The smallest blessing he's willing to give because she believes with all her heart that whatever he does for her, it will be enough. So my question is, can we get to that place where we're praying, help me? And even before anything changes, before our circumstances are resolved, we have this overwhelming sense of peace because we know Jesus is in the situation with us. That is our faith. We know his peace while still not knowing our prayer will be answered or what the outcome will be. Can we know his presence and know it's enough? And can we hold on in prayer through the pause? I've been in this situation several times. I've prayed. I've prayed for people to be healed. I've prayed for situations I've been in myself. And I've had that experience of knowing a tremendous peace without knowing how things would turn out. So I know it's real. I think when this woman got Jesus' attention, we, when he turned to her and spoke to her, he saw something in her eyes, he saw into her heart, and he knew she believed. And he knew, she knew, he was just as present to her as she was to him. She knew that whatever he offered, no matter if it only seemed like a crumb to you or I, for her it would be enough. Now there's good news here, and the good news is Jesus doesn't give out crumbs. He is compassionate, merciful, and generous beyond our expectations, and he always responds to a cry for mercy, he always responds to a prayer of faith. I think Jesus undoubtedly was impressed by this woman's love for her daughter and her efforts to get to him, and he does heal her daughter. But what he commends her for is her faith. And I think she becomes for us another example of what Paul calls the righteousness that comes by faith. The healing of her daughter is an affirmation of her faith. Faith is a gift of the Spirit, and it's a powerful gift. It keeps our hearts and minds on Jesus. Faith doesn't let us quit. It keeps our hope alive. It changes things. It changes us. And when we admit that we can't cope on our own, faith in Jesus is the force that makes the difference and moves us forward. Let's pray. Father, we do thank you for your presence among us, for your gift of faith. And we pray, Lord, that we may use that faith to be assigned to unbelievers, that people may know by how we live that you are a God who shows mercy and compassion, a God who loves, and a God we can trust.
And we pray this in Jesus' name.